Welcome back, everyone. This is Dennis Aloya, your host for Keeping It Real, live from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, this is the TV uh, web television show that focuses on everyday people with uh, very interesting and great life experiences. Uh, I want to also welcome our other uh, partners, Harmony Booking and American Hearts Radio. Uh, the segments of this show, if you're a new viewer, I will go over uh, just for a moment or two. The segments after this segment is completed and we have a little commercial time, we'll come back and have a segment called Everyday Heroes. This is a segment where uh, I interview an everyday hero, uh, a person such as a veteran, a police officer, an EMT, a teacher, and tonight we have a lady uh, that's going to be joining us shortly uh, who is a foster parent, and I certainly think those folks are everyday heroes. Uh, after that segment, we will go to another segment called Old School in Business. This is the segment where I will interview a senior uh, citizen, as I call him, seasoned citizen, uh, with a really interesting uh, life experience. Uh, also, I may uh, interview a business owner uh, during that segment, and that's always an interesting time. Uh, the third and last segment is what I uh, call the artist, independent artist segment. Excuse me. That's where I will uh, focus on and interview an artist that has been working for usually very many years that may not be as well known as uh, he would like to be, but after this show, of course, he will be. Uh, this could be a comedian. Uh, we do have a very funny guy later on tonight. i got to give you a heads up on that. Maybe a magician such as myself. I've never tried to interview myself. I wonder how that might go. Uh, also, we have uh, a lot of uh, musical talent available that will come in and uh, be interviewed in that segment as time goes on. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, that's how the show uh, kind of starts and ends. And in between that, of course, we've got to have commercials because commercials pay the bills. Uh, speaking of commercials, this is the home of the web television $20 Internet ad. That is available to you out there if you have a business, a cause, or uh, you have a product that you'd like to get uh, well-known out there in the marketplace. We do, in fact, have a global reach. Uh, our uh, ad rates are extremely inexpensive compared to traditional ads and your, uh, you know, your radio, TV, uh, that's your traditional type, or your newspapers. Uh, it pays to advertise. That's an old adage, and it certainly does apply. Uh, remember the guy with the pet rock? Uh, I'm sure that uh, he got the word out, and, you know, it was a catchy thing and suddenly became a multi-zillionaire. So it's uh, possible, but nobody's going to know about what you got out there to advertise or sell unless you call us and uh, get your, uh, your next ad going on this television network and television program. Um, I wanted to give a couple of shout outs before I uh, get started uh, with the remainder of the show to a couple of very important people. Number one, uh, Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. He's our uh, uh, only prisoner of the Taliban in Afghanistan. He's been a prisoner for over 1,100 days. Uh, we have been focusing on his plight and trying to raise awareness for uh, his situation and getting him uh, back home as soon as possible through our efforts on the um, Harmony Booking website, American Hearts Radio, and this television station as well. And uh, we're trying to get petitions uh, signed through uh, the radio station efforts in particular and presented to folks in the State Department so that we can put the pressure and can keep the pressure on them and uh, get some relief for Bo and his family in that uh, bad situation. Speaking of American Hearts Radio, I wanted to give a big shout out to Earl Hayes and his staff. I know you guys are doing a fantastic job. I listened to you. Uh, the counter was up to over 800 the other evening. And, uh, uh, you know, congratulations to you and all your uh, folks there and the efforts that you're putting in. V SPAN TV Network, I wanted to shout out to. They're a network uh, totally devo uh, devoted to veteran affairs and uh, making things easier for returning veterans from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Do a great job. Wanted to also say hi to all my family and friends watching out there this evening. You all know who you are. Um, I appreciate you watching, and thanks for all the kind words and kind emails. I might mention, too, uh, before it gets past me, that while you're watching this show, you could actually chat live uh, while watching this show. Go to the bottom of your screen. You'll see a chat box. Uh, just put your comments in there, and uh, 
I'll try to catch them as uh, time goes on, and we'll read a few on the... Uh, as we go along, oh, I got one from Moo Girl already. Hi, Dennis. Moo Moo to you, darling. <laughs> okay, that was our first chat coming in, so we know you're out there. Great. All right, now also, got to tell you about Bobby Rotundo, an American Hawk. Fantastic group of fellows. I adopted one of their songs last week, and it's going to be a permanent part of this show, and I'm very pleased to uh, have that happen and have the... Uh, uh, the ability to be able to do that. The song is called These Colors Are Mine. It's a very patriotic song. Be sure to uh, watch it during the first commercial break. And if uh, it doesn't touch your heart, you don't have a heart. So be sure to watch that. And it's just a, a great song. I love it. I love everything about the military, the veterans that have served, uh, you know, the people that are serving now. You're all great. And that's what keeps this country free. And we really, really do appreciate you. Uh, for your service. Um, I introduced a little segment uh, not too long ago on this show. Uh, it's called I Love This Story. So I'm going to read a story a week uh, if I think it's worthwhile for this Keeping It Real TV show. And uh, after I do read this little uh, informational piece, we're going to go and take a short commercial break. Uh, first, I'm going to preface this by telling you uh, I am of Italian descent. And I, uh, of course, being Italian, have... Uh, uh, somewhat of a passing interest in the mafia history and, and all of that. So I've got a story here that takes place with a guy named Artie. He gets tired of working so hard every day and not getting anywhere. And he's seeing all these guys in his tough New York neighborhood that are obviously in the mob, wearing three-piece suits, they have fancy cars, they have pretty women hanging around them, and he decides, that's for me. I'm going to join the mafia. So he goes up to one of the leaders and he says, Hi, my name's Artie. I want to join the Mafia. The guy says, you ever kill anyone uh, for money? Artie replies, no. Well, the guy says, you either got to kill somebody or you got to be born into the Mafia. And uh, he says, uh, so Artie says, well, if I kill somebody, how much will you pay me? And the guy says, I'm not going to pay you anything. And Artie says, well, come on, it's worth something. How about a dollar? So the guy says, okay, I'll give you a dollar. And the guy says, here's what you got to do. He says, you kill somebody, tell me about it, and if I see it in the morning paper, I'll pay you your dollar and you'll be in. Artie agrees to this. He says, thank you very much, and he heads off on his mission. <clears throat> he looks for an unfortunate person at Ralph's supermarket. He sees an old lady pushing a cart and decides that lady looks like she's lived a full life. So he grabs her around the neck and chokes her to death. The bag boy sees this occur and chases after him. Artie realizes that he cannot outrun the bag boy. So he turns, grabs the bag boy by the neck, and you guessed it, he chokes him to death. In the morning paper the next day, the headline read, Artie chokes two for a dollar at Ralph's. <laughs> oh, I just heard that massive groan all over the world come through this. Uh, <laughs> I liked it. I hope some of the other people out there have got the same sense of humor and liked it as well. So now we're going to go to a short three-minute commercial break. Don't go away. It's going to get better, I promise you. Take it away, Al. Well, I gave three years to my country and a few more in reserves. Gave me back all that I needed Maybe more than I deserved But now I hear a rumbling People trying to tear us down Well, it's time to stand up tall And never give an inch of ground Cause these colors stand up And these colors will fight And if you don't believe in that Well, it's your right well, these colors won't fade, and these colors will fly. I'll wave this freedom flag each day until I die. These colors are mine. These colors are mine. To all you sons and daughters, Shipping out now everywhere Each 
day we're thinking about you Every night you're in our prayers To the ships in angry waters Cutting through the highest waves God speak to you and courage From the home of the brave These colors stand up And these colors will fight And if you don't believe in that Well, it's your right Well, these colors won't fade And these colors will fly I'll wave this freedom flag each day until I die These colors are mine well, These colors are mine Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us. Hope you enjoyed that little commercial break and that great song by uh, American Hawk. Uh, my next, my first guest, actually, not my next guest, my first guest is a lady that I've got a lot of uh, respect for. Uh, we met recently uh, after uh, I did a show along with the Coconut Grove players at the Canton, Georgia Theater. Uh, Marie Blackwell, my guest right here, was in the audience, and we met afterwards and got to talking about some things, and I thought, uh, uh, gee, she might be a good person to interview about her uh, ongoing current experience in the foster uh, child world of, of things out there. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Marie. She's president of the Cherokee County Foster and Adopt Ad Adoptive Parents Association in Cherokee County, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. It consists of approximately 60 members. She's been president for the last six years. Uh, she's a foster parent herself over the uh, the past approximately seven years she's taken in uh, 30 children of different ages um, she <clears throat> excuse me in addition to bringing acting as a foster parent uh, she tries to raise money uh, through her organization uh, for the kids needs um, and we're going to talk about a couple of those needs that she has immediately and I hope you folks might consider opening your hearts and wallets and and maybe uh, taking up this cause and getting a few dollars to them. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome Mrs. Blackwell to this program. Hi, Marie. Hi. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for um, inviting me over. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned that you'd been a foster parent for six years and you had 30 children. What what age groups, I mean, what ages have they been? Have they been as, as young as, like, toddlers? Yes. Yeah. Um, the youngest is nine months old. Nine months. Yes. Wow. And the oldest, I believe, nine years old. Okay. How long do you usually uh, the, the children stay in a foster care home? Is there is there any average time? It all depends. Um, our average, well, our time was anywhere from one week to two years. One week to two years. Certainly get attached to them quickly. I'm sure. In one week. In one week, okay. <laughs> you just had an experience uh, last week, I believe, with two uh, girls uh, you brought into your home. Yes. Uh, and um, I happened to meet one of the girls on Sunday when we were having lunch. We ran into each other, and just a sweet little kid, uh, eight years old, I believe. Yes, just yeah. turned eight. Yeah. Well, it's great that kids have uh, you know folks out there that uh, will take them in during uh, some difficult times and give them what they need, 
which is love and understanding. And Marie certainly brings a lot to, of that to the kids. Um, also, the other parents involved. Um, I, I don't know the other parents, but I'm sure they're, you know, just as open with their emotions as you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I did the uh, show at the Canton Theater, along with the other Coconut Grove players, I asked uh, community businesses to purchase tickets to the show, which I donated to foster kids in our county. Uh, how did they like the show, Marie? They loved the show. They loved the show. They loved the show. <laughs> now, there were six acts in the show. Out of all of the acts that they saw, which one did they like the best? The ventriloquist. Thanks a lot, Marie. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I love putting you on the spot. <laughs> so I got to agree. I'm keeping it real. No, Peter Hefty was great. You know, Peter Hefty was great. Peter, if you're out there, you got fans up here. Come on back and do another show, bud. Uh, yeah, we had a great time. We did a couple of shows uh, over a two-night period and had lots of kids there and lots of adults, and I was glad to be able to raise some money for tickets so that the foster kids and their families could attend. And we wanted um, to thank you for thank Casa and the donors for that. Oh yeah, anytime, absolutely. We don't get to do stuff like yeah. that at all. Well, I mentioned that your group uh, kind of has a current need right now, a couple of needs, and I'd like you to kind of take a moment or two and just expand on that and just tell the audience out there uh, what your need is or our needs are and how they can contact your group. Okay. Well, um, one of our ma major needs right now is um, we need sponsorship for our storage facility that we just um, acquired um, through public storage. Um, the fees that it costs each month, we just don't have the um, income right now to cover that on an on ongoing monthly basis. So we're looking for sponsorships to cover that cost. It's uh, roughly about $100 a month. And what we do with it is we, we get clothing, equipment, bikes, school supplies, whatever the community is willing to donate. Um, for the children and we put it in that in that unit our homes are not big enough to store you know what we need to you're actually gets, trying to put it in your own personal dwellings along yes, with your regular yeah. uh, possessions and so forth yeah and it gets cumbersome and it's yeah. hard to get you don't know what you have anymore right. it's just stuff so. well, how about let me ask you a question Marie in addition to the the finances obviously that you need to pay for the storage unit if people wanted to donate let's say some school supplies mm -hmm. could they do that yes how would they go about doing that? Um, they can contact us on our website, which is... Just happen to have a little poster there. Hold it up a little even so you can, can see, see it right it. there. I don't know if that's showing up on it's TV, but you can read it, and they it's can write a, it down. The letters are CC Cat Cat F A Frank Apple P A Paul Apple dot O-R-G. Okay. And um, my contact information is on there, um, and so they can call me or they okay. can email me. Um, if they have items they want to donate, if you're in the Cherokee County, Georgia area, um, I'll pick it up or you can bring it to me either way. Okay. Um, but you'll accept donations from we, all around the country and everywhere else, right? As far as cash donations, um, on yeah. our website, we have a donation spot and it's linked to PayPal. It's secure. Okay, so you can great. do, I think you can do debit cards on PayPal now. Yeah, stuff, debit so. cards, uh, credit cards, and yeah. most anything. We have a PayPal account to... Uh, make it convenient for our uh, potential clients out there to want to advertise with us. It's a great way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I was also going to ask you another question about the uh, uh, the donations. Now, we're in the, the, down here in Georgia, the schools just reopened within the last week or two. And believe it or not, there's still a big need out there for school supplies, I'm sure, especially among these foster kids. But in addition, in addition to that, before you know it, we're going to be into the uh, holiday season. Yes. And the kids are, of course, going to, uh, going to be hoping and praying that they'll get some gifts for the holiday. So uh, if you got donations, you'd use the donations at this time for the um, storage facility and maybe take some of the donations towards Christmas gifts. Is that what you're planning to do? Um, yes. We have different programs that we do each month. We try to do an event. Um, uh -huh. I know um, in December we'll be doing a Christmas party, holiday right. party. Um, for the kids, um, trying to do some entertainment for them, and um, there is a Secret Santa program in Cherokee County, but for our association, we would like to also present the child with a, one toy unwrapped. Oh, okay, so great. We, um, for this event, um, so we want to collect toys, unwrap toys for them, um, so they can get you know at least one thing. Yeah. Um, and then um, we also have other events where you know we supplies food for the children we do a give me a break program we've been doing for four or five years now 
great. Um, we started that with a, a KC Foundation had given us a very small grant to get it off the ground. And then from there, we were to keep it going with sponsorships and things like that. So we've kept it going five years, um, but we still need sponsors for that. We do get some um, help from Goshen Valley um, Boys Ranch in the area. They, they help donate for that program. Um, uh, food entertainers like yourselves right. um, to come out I'm and do things think for the we're kids, <laughs> <laughs> magicians and fun stuff for the kids to do because they're there for about five hours and so it gives the parents time to go on a date with their spouse or go shopping or go home and take a nap okay. which is a commodity when you have a lot of kids. Yes I'm sure you mentioned that if you ha you currently have three children in your home you were yes. telling me before the show and they're what age group from what to what? Right now, I have a three, a six, and an eight. Okay, so if you have to take one to the doctor, the other two kind of have to tag along, and it, that becomes yeah, challenging? It can be. It depends on if they're in school or that kind of thing. But right. if you have toddlers, a lot of them that aren't in school, and you have to take them all, it, that's very challenging. Yes, I'm sure. Yes. Um, are there any other uh, groups such as yours in other communities around the country? Does every county have a foster care program, to the best of your knowledge? And are you tied in with other groups across the country? We're tied in with other other counties <clears throat> in Georgia. Okay. Um, uh, I've got a good relationship with the Cobb County Foster Parent Association. Okay, that's one of the largest counties here in Metro Atlanta. And they have the largest membership as well in Georgia. Great. Um, and uh, we've been branching out to Bartow County, Floyd County, other counties in the area. Uh -huh. um, but not every county has an association. It Since it's a voluntary uh, right. position <laughs> right. and it takes a lot of dedication and hard work. Um, and some counties are just too small yeah. to be able to do one. Um, so well, not every county does it. Well, I know I've been asking about your efforts and what you do you know, for the children in need. And uh, I have a question. What do you get back from this personally? Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Yeah. Lots of love. Yep. Yeah, you, you can't put a price tag on the lots of love no. part, can you? No. And it's lots like, of like lo what I was telling you earlier, when you get a child in and they are hurting emotionally and they're yeah. feeling disconnected from their family, they don't know why they're here. Um, a lot of times, either they get taken from school and they are wondering, "Where's mom and dad? Does mom and dad know where I am?" Right you know what's going on and they're scared to tears yeah and horrified and all they have is you so uh, well thank goodness they have hug, you a hug goes a long way yeah i'm sure it's a it's a wonderful program folks i encourage you to look into it in your own community uh, uh this little girl that uh, she has in her home right now who i met sunday for the first time briefly stole my heart mm -hmm. uh if you're uh, inclined to look into that program either as a volunteer uh, to help in any way possible or, or become a foster parent yourself, it's a very rewarding and worthwhile venture. Uh, you'll get a lot, probably get a lot more out of it than what you put in, I think, in the long run. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes. It's not about the money because you don't make any. Right. Um, it's about what, what you can do to help a child when they're in need at that moment and how you feel by giving back. Absolutely. Before we break again, Marie, I want you to give your information out again as okay. to how they can contact uh, you or your organization, okay, okay, and help you out. And before I forget, now, they've already paid for one month of the storage facility, but they're having a real problem coming up with the rest of the money on a monthly basis, which is around $100 a month. That'll allow them to store a lot of the things for the kids on an ongoing basis. It's, it's a real critical need they have as a group, and I hope somebody out there would consider uh, helping out in any way, shape, or form. Yes. Okay. So they can go to our website at ccfapa.org and um, get my email address or go directly on there and make the donation. And I believe through PayPal it may ask you if you want to do it on a reoccurring basis or just a one-time. Oh, okay. But all the funds collected go to do use for the children on all the events that we do. And I wanted to make a comment about one more thing that we're doing. Yes, ma'am. On November 10th, we're going to be putting um, hosting a play, um, and it's going to be at the Mount Zion Baptist Church Gym in Canton. Canton, and Georgia. Canton, Georgia. Okay. It's called um, it's it, it's love, isn't it? And the okay. show um, is going to show how the actions of parents influence children. It come um, comes to domestic violence. It's about domestic violence, okay. uh, teen dating violence, um, because that issue is so prevalent 
uh, in the schools and problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the parents don't even know what's going on until it's too late. Um, so we're putting a light to that. And Try and draw some attention to it. And right. And help the teens, to, to if they know someone, right. what to do. And those that are in it, what to do before it's too late. Um, so we're it's open to the public. It's from 12 to 1 that day at the gym. It's free. Um, so we have invited teen groups from different church groups church youth groups, Great. parents to come, um, any community people. We've got government people coming, domestic violence people coming, all that, uh, officials and the school board. So we want to invite whoever wants to come to do so. They can go on our website on the calendar link, and there's okay. a link to register just so we make sure we have enough seating for everyone um, for them to register to come. We just ask that no children under 12 be present um, due to the graphic, uh, right. you know, the it's yeah, graphic, viol graphic <laughs> yeah. violence depiction. Yes. Well, Marie, I can't thank you enough for being my guest on our Everyday Heroes segment. You've been marvelous. Uh, the cause is marvelous. And I hope people out there take up the, the banner and uh, help this lady and her group out. It's a worthwhile cause. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay. We're uh, uh, going to take... Oh, just sit where you're oh. at. Okay. <laughs> or I'll feel lonely. <laughs> I, I wanted to mention before we go to the break here, right after this uh, this little mention I wanted to give to everyone, uh, please email uh, us and let us know where you're at, what you think of the show, how we may be able to improve it. Anything is acceptable except throw the guest uh, host off the show. Uh, other than that, uh, just email us and let us know where, you, where you're at out there. We'd really be interested in getting some feedback about uh, the show and also tell your neighbors and your friends about it. We're going to do this, hopefully, for the foreseeable future, every Tuesday evening at 7.15, and it's Keeping It Real, live from Atlanta with Dennis Aloya. So I think that we are going to, before we make a break, I'm going to let you know that you can email us at harmonybooking at hotmail.com. Okay? There was some confusion about that email on my part last week, and I apologize. So it's harmonybooking at hotmail.com. Okay, so I think with that, we're going to take just a couple of minutes and uh, focus and feature one of our performers that's available through Harmony Booking, and uh, you'll get a chance to see them perform here in just a moment. Take it away, Al. my 
Hi, welcome back, everybody, to the next segment of our show, Keeping It Real, with me, your host, Dennis Aloya, live from Atlanta every Tuesday evening, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time, the home of the $20, unbelievable $20 web television ad that is available to you, the customer. My next guest is somebody I've known since he took his first breath, (laughs) literally. This, if you don't notice the resemblance, folks... This is my son, my firstborn son, Michael Aloya. Uh, I love you, Dad. I love you too, Mike. <laughs> Keep it professional. Here we All go. Right. <laughs> Mike has another name called Wild Man, but I'm not going to let him get into that mode. I'm gonna, I've been focusing and, and trying to keep him serious the entire day so they can get his message out to our wonderful subscribers and folks out there watching this show. Mike, before I get into the questions about everything that you've got going on and we've got going on together, I've got a very important question to ask you. Okay. okay? And that is, I want you to take the next 15 minutes or so and tell me everything you did growing up that I never had a clue about. (laughs) Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me get my notepad. (laughs) Okay, start. Uh, I plead the fifth. (laughs) Should have been a politician. <laughs> no. okay. I believe the fifth in gen. No. Now, now, listen, parents out there, don't you always don't you always have this urge to ask your adult children that question? Really, what did you get away with that I had no clue about or never never realized? You'd probably be shocked and have to take out more life insurance for your heart attack problem. <laughs> but uh, anyway, my son Mike is really uh, a unique character. I love him because he's my flesh and blood. But in addition to that, I respect him greatly because of his abilities. And his heart. And uh, let's talk about his abilities first. Uh, Mike took an idea, just a, an idea from the ground up, and actually created Harmony Booking. That is the umbrella company that encompasses American Hearts Radio and also encompasses this television show, Keeping It Real, along with other TV shows that are on the horizon that will be starting in the very near future. Uh, this became a reality. And he's drawn me into this effort with him, and I'm glad that he did. We're having a lot of fun with it, meeting a lot of great new people I never thought would come into my life, like this lady, Marie Blackwell, that was just up here. Amen. Um, if it wasn't for this effort, I would have never ran into her. And uh, that's been a blessing, you know. Uh, but in addition to that, Mike also has another business he's uh, involved with, uh, a company that is called FHLA. And I'd like to start out tonight, Mike, by asking you uh, to explain to our listeners a little bit about what H, uh, I'm sorry, FHLA is all about and how it can help the folks out there. Well, um, FHLA stands for Forensic Home Loan Audits. And uh, we're based in uh, Orange Park, Florida and Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And what we do is um, basically uh, we help homeowners um this uh fhla is based because what's going on in fit fact let me explain first um you have this uh business section that was in the newspaper that talks about the um uh forced sales by of illegal foreclosures and things about in that nature and things that the banks have done that that they wasn't supposed to do well, basically, what FHLA let, does. Let me, let me interject. This was okay. this paper that he referred to is the business section of the Atlanta Journal Constitution on August the fifth. Okay, and the headline reads: "Many forced sales may be Ill- illegal." Okay, forced sales of homes, and uh, Mike's company helps people to uh, every, counteract this. Yes, every homeowner has the right to validate your home loan which means you're forcing the bank to produce the documents required by law to prove ownership of the loan. 
And if the banks cannot produce those documents showing ownership of the loan, well, they're not legally allowed to collect on that loan. And um, every homeowner has the right to validate the home loan before the banks can sell the house. Um, the That's banks don't want uh, homeowners to, to, to know that they have certain rights. And you have these rights. And you can contact uh, FHLA LLC um, at 1-800-323-9750 and, uh, or go to the website www.fhla.us. And it's, uh, you know, knowledge right. is power. Yeah, and, sure uh, is. you know, if you don't know, then, you know, the banks don't want you to know. So um, basically, um, like I said, every homeowner is scared to death. The banks did a lot of messed up things. They thought they'd never get caught. A lot of these uh, these loans were purchased and bought and sold over and over again in bundles. And these loans uh, were sold in bundles of thousands of loans per bundle. And they were pushed through the system very quickly. And this is where a lot of those brokers made a lot of fast money. And they pushed these loans into what they call these secondary securities. And this is where the banks actually lost control of the paperwork. Either documents never got produced or they got shredded, destroyed, or went to China. Who knows? That's when uh, a lot of people were flipping houses back when the market was uh, yes. before it crashed. Well, I think it's uh, a good thing to probably mention how they can contact FHLA again. And then yes. I want I want to ask you about Harmony Booking and also okay. American Arts Radio. What's that number again for it's, uh, FHLA? It's toll-free, 1-800-323-9750. And the website is www.fhla.us. And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Jimmy Gibson. He's okay. co-owner of the company, and as well as Brian Richards. Uh, we've got a great staff of people, very professional. Uh, we've saved a lot of homes. And, uh, you know, give us a call if you're having problems with your mortgage or if you don't know uh, how many times that loan has been sold. Um, like I said, uh, challenge the bank. You have the right to challenge them. And if they can't produce those documents and your house is worth two hundred thousand dollars, well, I tell you what, if they can't prove ownership, you just got a two hundred thousand dollar Christmas gift from the bank. <laughs> Best case scenario, so, folks, give them a call. Mike, let's move on now to all right. tell uh, the audience about your vision and how Harmony Booking got started and what happened as a result of that, as far as American Hearts Radio and this television uh, show. You're well, on. first thing I'd like to say, Dad, is God works through people. And I am on a mission from God, and I've done a lot of crazy things in my life. And I Lord knows, to that. Lord knows, I was a problem yes. child. But I have yes. grown up, and um, you know, it, it took a lot of hard knocks to really, uh, you know, really understand what life's all about. And I'm here to tell you, you know, no matter who you are, where you are, where you've come from, and what you've been through in life, as long as you put God first. And you focus and do what's right in this world. There is nothing that you cannot accomplish um, once you set your mind to it. Your dreams can come true. Absolutely. And I want to give a shout out to my partner and a very, very wonderful friend, and that's Earl Hayes. I met Earl on my travels. I was working for an entertainment group as executive producer. And uh, I met with this man, and uh, he had this vision of, of launching a radio station. Again, he and uh, he actually started efforts from a grateful nation, and uh, that's bringing the awareness to bring POW Sergeant Bo Bergdahl home, which today is uh, National the Bo Tuesday, which we have our day of prayer for Bo and his family. Uh, you can go to www.effortsfromagratefulnation.com, and uh, we're also tied in with V-SPAN, the Veterans Television Network out of Chicago. Um, Mike, let me ask you a question. How many people are right now broadcasting on the, the radio show, which is American Hearts Radio? How many how many broadcasters do you have right now? Well, we, we're, we're getting ready to launch uh, several ma major radio shows on American Hearts. We've got okay. Daryl Rhodes is going to be having his own radio show called the Daryl Rhodes Radio Show. Very funny guy. We've got Peter Hefty is going to be having the Hefty Humor Hour. We've got Ann Wolf, which is the Lighthouse Ministries. I've heard her sing. She's oh, she's unbelievable. beautiful. Yeah. And I've got Lonnie Hill. Um, he's been on Soul Train. He's an R&B sensation. Great. Uh, he's going to be having his own radio show. And Lonnie's out of Colorado, is that right? Yes, Lonnie okay. Hill, fantastic guy. Well, I can tell you from speaking to Earl that uh, you know he now has an audience that uh, extends from the United States to Germany and France. He's got the steadily, steady listeners on that show, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, just about every day. Uh, 
I wanted to also ask you about the talent that you have available uh, through Harmony Booking. What kind of talent is that, and how can they contact you? Well, Dad, they we've got top-notch talent from comedy to any type of variety, uh, every genre of music, whether it be country, rock and roll, R&B, jazz. Uh, basically, what we have is anything for any event, Harmony Booking can provide that. Okay, and I'll tell you and what. The we're, way we're trying to get a midget wrestling team on board Oh, that as well. should be interesting. Okay, I wouldn't <laughs> qualify for that, obviously. But uh, I, Before we go any further, I do want to say that Earl Hayes was the inspiration to me to, to get this going and help him in his cause. And since me and Earl and Angie Martin, which is a wonderful, Hi, wonderful lady out of Indiana... <laughs> That's um, Moo Moo Girl she, that chat, chatted yes, a while she ago. Has, she works her butt off, and, it, and, and she's donated a lot of her time and efforts. And me and Earl have worked very, very hard to build this. And uh, I thank the Lord for Earl Hayes. And, uh, you know, oh. I, I want to give a, a big shout out and a, and a thank you, Earl, for all of your hard work and, and making this a reality. And um, I also want to give a shout out to Johnny and Donnie Van Zandt. Um, I've been working for those guys uh, for about a little over 20, almost 25 years. I did a lot of cleaning, painting, repair work for them. That's the Leonard Skinner group. Yeah, right? Johnny, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame guys. Yes, sir. Johnny Van Zant's the lead singer for Leonard Skinner. Uh, Donnie is uh, a singer and guitarist for 38 Special. And those guys have uh, mentored me, helped me most of my life, been there for me, never kicked me when I was down and gave me the love and support that I needed. Right. And, and, you know, that's... Well, people come into your life at different times for different reasons. We're going to have to take a short commercial break here in just a couple of minutes because I've got a fellow named Mark Evans coming up. Uh, I hope he's arrived here, uh, hopefully. And uh, he's going to do a little bit of his uh, uh, comedy story for the group. Can but I do Mike, it? Uh, want, I wanted to mention something before I get back to you, son. Okay. Be, folks, be sure to go to the uh, American Hearts Radio website and look at their advertising. It is so unbelievably inexpensive compared to anything else out there. Uh, do yourselves a favor and advertise on this growing radio network. Got about uh, 30 seconds, Mike. 30 seconds. It's a shout-out to Jackie Knight, Gypsy Comedy Club out in St. Augustine. <laughs> Mimi Johnson, the arts reporter, tomorrow night, Wednesday, on MimiJohnson.net. I want to give a shout-out to Billy B. He's got a new sitcom coming out in the fall called That's right. Two Girls and a Comedian. It's going to be on Fox. I'm proud of you, brother. I want to give a uh, shout out to my children, Allison and Amanda, and my grandson, Emmanuel, and uh, my niece, Chelsea, and the love of my life, Joy, and her son, Jacob. Uh, thank you for everything. And I do want to give another shout out to Steve Moore, our photographer. That's right. Fantastic guy. Great and photographer. Uh, and Dad, I want to say that I am truly blessed to be sitting here right now with you. Well, and I know you. Uncle Kaz and Mom and everybody that's that's passed on is sitting there smiling right now. And uh, we are on a mission from God. Contact Harmony Booking at www.harmonybooking.com. We have all the talent for any event. Uh, go to www.americanheartsradio.com. Uh, give us a call, 904-229-8150. And, uh, Dad, I'd really want... I, Thank you for having me on your show. That's and okay. I just the price say, is right. Well, I, I know you told me to get a haircut and get a real job, too. But uh, I do want to say rock and roll. Okay. With that, we're going to take our short three-minute break. We'll be back. We'll Don't be go back. away. Well, we've got kind of a split crowd, so this is good. I need to talk to a lot of you people. And uh, the Southerners, I hope you'll embrace this. I call myself Southern Not Stupid because as a lifetime Southerner, I am so sick of the whole country thinking we're stupid just because we're in the South. You guys tired of that? And I want to talk about this, too. Uh, who's with me on this? A big wedding these days or the biggest waste of money going? Anybody agree with that? Thank you. Really, by the time you get through pictures, flowers, caters, music, you got a couple hundred people, you're 50, 60 grand. Yeah, you could buy a HUD home cash for what they want. <laughs> but if y'all are out there, you got your kids or your wedding's coming up and you just didn't want to say anything, pay attention because I'm going to save you some money. When your day comes, I'm going to keep you away from the biggest crook you'll meet all day at your wedding, and that's the limo driver. Oh, God, watch these people. At my wedding, this jerk was going to charge me 500 bucks to go eight miles. Can you believe that? Minimum charge. Church, reception, five bills. Nip that one in the bud. Got my uncle to do it for free. He's a funeral director. Oh, she got pissed. <laughs> I mean, okay, it smelled weird in there. We got a little wrinkle laying in the back. But, you know, we're talking 500 bucks. She was almost okay with it. 
to the best man got a bar of soap and wrote just buried on the back that <laughs> set her off man this goes out to my baby Mary Lou who I always love with all my heart And welcome back, everyone. I was sitting here enjoying the commercial time and watching Mr. Daryl Rhodes, the funniest man I know, doing hamburgers from heaven. Daryl, I got to tell you, man, you appeal to the inner female side of me with that <laughs> hamburgers from heaven rendition. My heart was just pumping. Anyway, <laughs> Daryl is an awesome guy and a great funny man. Our uh, shows are archived, by the way, on our website. And you can go back in there and look at the uh, first show, which featured Daryl Rhodes. Uh, and he was really, really great. Uh, I'm kind of rambling here and talking just a little more than I normally could do in this introductory segment because uh, there's a gentleman uh, that I'm waiting for. I'm coming. That's, uh, you're, I think I heard him hang coming. Hang on. Uh, could he, is he, right, hang on, hang is on. he I'm here? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Woo. How you Hi. doing? Oh man, this you are treating us like rock stars here. That's I was, fantastic. I, I was back at catering services. Yeah. Um, all they had was artichokes, though. They had artichokes. Where have I heard that before? I don't know, but I don't like artichokes. <laughs> but I was eating. This is nice. This is great, man. This is a you set know. that costs uh, who knows well, you know, how many. Is, uh, do you remember that Seinfeld pennies. episode where uh, Kramer found the Merv Griffin show in the dumpster? Yes. This is almost as nice. It really is. Fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. Well, I got to tell you, folks. Let me let me give you a little introduction here. These three words describe my guest perfectly. Southern, not stupid. This is Mr. Mark Evans. Mark has been performing comedy all over the world, literally, for the past 20, 21 years or so. He's performed at many, many clubs around the country, performed on many cruise ships, uh, has done uh, venues uh, big and small, and as well as stage work, this I believe, be right? Good. He must be good, yeah. <laughs> he's also got a CD out, which he's here to uh, mention to you. That is very, are you very funny. Are twenty bucks to? Uh, yes, we are. Oh, it's well. a twenty-second, fifteen-second spot. Uh, but anyway, for your listening I got pleasure, a dollar for the artichokes. Though, <laughs> <laughs> you can use that joke in, in your uh, monologue. I sure could. There's no way in hell I'm gonna. But I oh, sure okay. Could. <laughs> 
Well, Mark, what are you doing these days? Tell us about your life and your career and where it's taking you. Oh, uh, well, I've been really lucky. I've um and uh, I started in '93. Uh huh. And that time, I'm in over 40 states, a handful of countries, and a bunch of cruise ships. Yeah. Um, on the the whole southern not stupid things. I'm a lifetime southerner. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I was gonna back you up. Have you ever gotten sick on a cruise ship? I'm no. Just curious. Well, no. One time I did. I didn't even know that's what it was. Uh, the ship because uh, I didn't drink. Yeah. And the seas were calm, but they got really, really, really bad right. in the middle of the night, and they're calm when I woke up. So it's like having a hangover. I was okay. sick, and but then when I found out, it was just uh, even the cruise director was sick. Ah. Uh, I just got some uh, Dramamine, and everything was good. Good, good. Yeah. You were saying? Um. Oh, lifetime southern. <laughs> Southern, not stupid. That's right. That's right. I'm sick and tired of everybody thinking we're stupid just because we're from the South. Yeah. Um, I guess we've got a lot of Southern. I think there's a fair amount of Southerners out there. Okay, yeah, we got stupid Text people. Text us if you're Southern. Yeah. Well, where's it come up? Hi, y'all. Let me hey, see Mark, it on who, the text. Who, 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 who's who? Oh, that's my sister and her birds. Oh, I thought that was <laughs> Lee J. Bird. No, that's no. Your sister and her Waldo birds? Waldo and Elmo. Waldo and Elmo. Yeah, Are they old, parrots? Oh, uh, they're big old, huge dinosaur-looking birds. Really? And my cats are probably watching, but they're not going to say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to be doing any shows in this area? I just did one. Um, you did? I'm hoping to do another one soon. I, over at, um, hopefully, at one of your future guests, uh, Jerry Farber's room. Over yes, at Jerry, Jerry will be on next week. You got him? Okay. Yes, I do. He's a legend here in the Atlanta uh, Jerry's market. Jerry's side door. I did a CD release show. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead, I'm going to owe you the You want to show it? Yeah, it's... Uh, there you go. Oh, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> it's <laughs> uh, Southern. Well, I see what you get for free, folks. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> it just got released nationally this year. By nationally, La Laughing Hyena Records picked me up. They're the people that Laughing had Jeff Hyena. Yeah, Jeff Foxworthy uh, was with them on cassette back in the eighties. Oh, okay. And um, so I'm figuring and five years from now, I'm either gonna be rolling in cash, or I'm be sitting there going, "Huh, yeah." Been in the whole country, somebody yeah. would have bought one. Isn't that the CD you can purchase at any yes. local truck stop? Uh, truck stops of America, the TAs, Petros, and Loves. Okay, so and your market or is for truck my, drivers. Um, uh, SouthernNotStupid.com. Okay, so you can get me there. Okay, good. Is that your first CD that you've done? I've had several, but I um, this is the first real one. First oh, one that's okay. The first one that you marketed heavily. Yeah, I just uh, the others I burn on my computer and sell them after shows and. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, you were at my show with the Coconut Grove Players yeah. several weeks ago at the Canton Theater. Not just my show. It was our show sponsored by Harmony Booking. And um, you were out in the audience, and uh, you saw a very interesting thing happen at that show, didn't you? Um, uh, there was a surprise guest at that show. Wait, wasn't was talking about Possum? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Possum Man. Ooh. Possum Man, if you're out there, I'm looking for you. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's funny he named himself after Roadkill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a, something to be said for a that. Premonition. He was psychic. Premonition, yeah. Named Road himself kill, after Roadkill. Wearing pajamas. Yeah. This is a very unusual character. That was Only problem is, it isn't a character. This is how this man looks 24 7. But anyway, you saw an interesting uh, bit that he did, and so did I. And that's all yeah. I'll say about that. But, uh, in fact, that that bit was so interesting that we didn't even archive it. <laughs> Have you ever had, like, a tough act to follow in your travels? Oh, yeah. Like, um, you know, a snake charmer woman or there was a, oh, we, were, we were talking about this. I don't think. Are we allowed to say anything on this show if I don't? Uh, I anything really, within reason. We're well, family this, friendly. Well, this guy was way off color. This uh yeah, this kid that got forced into a show it was at the Egyptian Ballroom at the Fox for a big benefit. beautiful place. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's 600 people there. 200 were kids, and the kids all sat in the front rows. And um, this guy he brought out his puppet, but he's not really a ventriloquist. He yeah. burned the ventriloquist act onto a CD. Uh huh. And so he's just talking back and forth to himself, which means once you hit that button, there's no plan B. Right. And um, he was careful to can with this. He sat there. He's, the puppet's talking to Robbie, the kid, the guy, and he's like, yeah. hey, Robbie, remember, and all the kids in the front row, he goes, see the hot chick in the front row? Uh-huh. He goes, after the show, uh, he said what he's going to do to her. Yeah. <laughs> Ask her for a date. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That was it. Okay. And, uh... Oh, it was... And then he uh, went on to say a few more things that were made that one actually look good, and uh, <laughs> then I had to follow that. Well, you know, they say the cruise ship crowds are elderly people. I've been on nine yeah, cruises. That's, 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 a, that's a myth. That's a myth. Yeah. That's well, I've, a... I've been on nine cruises, and they're fantastic, and I'm not elderly. No. Nah. No, nah, it depends on what cruise you go to. You <laughs> but I take... never could stay up for the midnight show. What does that say? Uh... 
<laughs> that's, that's actually fun. <laughs> now, if you go on a cruise that's more than eight days, yeah. you're just going to be elderly because those are the only people that can afford it and take the time off. Well, that's true. That's and, true. Uh, the uh, three-day cruises, we kind of call that the steel-toed boot crowd. The steel toe boot crowd. Yeah, those are the ones that just get on and start drinking from the time they get on the ship, and they, <laughs> and they don't stop till they get arrested. And so I know exactly you who you're I'm talking kidding. about. Yeah, I saw them. That was an interesting group. Um, you know, I, I took a I took a head count when they boarded the ship in Jacksonville, and uh, when they came back aboard in the Bahamas, uh, we were missing about forty five of them. Oh, they, well, a lot. There was one time um, they could you could smell all the drugs on the yeah. down there and uh, as soon as they got into US waters uh, the ship had notified the coast guard so <laughs> as soon as they rolled into that 12 miles the ship was boarded seized and 50 60 people got arrested no kidding yeah <laughs> excuse well, me well the cruise lines they want to stay in line with them yeah absolutely they don't, they don't wanna, yeah my cruise experiences help. have been great and i've cruised a lot on carnival i know that's the primary uh, mm -hmm. line that you have worked yeah. for yeah i think their talent is excellent and uh, I'm going to give them a free plug here, but uh, they are a great cruise line, and they uh, they really provide a great product. Aside from the ship that sunk off the coast of Italy last year, yeah, but they don't own by that. Carnival, but they, we we won't talk about nah. that. No. But, they burned uh, up a few back in the nineties too. <laughs> we won't go there. Yeah, I got I got in trouble for uh, after that happened. I got in trouble for um, I got suspended for using the F word. No kidding. Yeah, fire. They don't like fire. fire jokes anymore. <laughs> you burn oh, up one little ooh. cruise ship. Say fire at and sea. Oh, That's a bad deal. Then they deal. get all bent out of shape. Yeah, right? yeah. Can't use the F word at sea. Fire. No. <laughs> Oh I got man! No sense of humor about that stuff. Well, yeah. let me. <laughs> yeah, that is a big problem at sea. Having been in the Navy, I know because there's nobody to help you out there. You got to fight it yourself. Um, but boy, how did we get on the uh, subject of fire on ships at sea? Oh, you probably started it. I did. I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, which was your favorite type of cruise? Would it be the three, the two day deal, or three day, or the one week? And what's uh, your favorite port or oh, area? I like anything that starts with the word Saint. Saint. St. Lucia, St. Kitts, St. Bart's, St. Thomas, St. Martin. A lot of people think when they think Caribbean, they just don't know anybody. They think the Bahamas. Right. The Bahamas is just an ugly sandbar, then they hate us there. They have pretty water, <laughs> but they hate us there. And um, aside, aside from the Atlantis, there's no reason to go to the Bahamas. Yeah, so I've been to, to the Atlantis. I left but, some of my money there. Yeah. Well, Western Caribbean, where you go to Mexico and then down yeah, Central Cosmo. America. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes, All it is. Those it is. Great. Um, I hope that uh, you get to... Um, have a lot more cruises to entertain a lot more people on. Is, is that what you're focusing on more, um, more or I'm, less? That um, country clubs, lodges, corporate events. Um, and you're one of our uh, folks we have available yeah. through Harmony Booking, folks. Hey, I just thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> you can hire this guy through Harmony Booking. And That's you're right. available most any uh, day or night of the week, right? Uh, yeah, I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that's a great way to end my show on a happy note. Oh, I didn't get to tell my travel story. No, you got to have me back. Go ahead. Oh, let's get to how long? How many? How long do we have? We got a couple of minutes, don't we? Hell yeah, we got a couple of minutes to fill. I had a the life of a comic. Flood. Hold on a second. Bird said the F word at sea is flood. I like that better than fire. Yeah, Bird. Good one, Bird. He doesn't spend much money. He gets those lower deck cabins. That's what happens when you get you know. Deck 72 down there at the bottom, <laughs> below the engine room. Uh, but, but this trip, I had a Wednesday in Valdosta, a Friday, Saturday in Fort Myers. Uh -huh. So Thursday, no gig, no hotel. you got to take care of yourself. Right. And usually I would just get to the hotel like, like at midnight, and they just let you come in and stay. But this guy was going to charge me 110 bucks for a room I was going to get for free in a few hours. Wow. So I just went to the IHOP, and you know you've worn out your welcome at an IHOP when they stop refilling your tea. <laughs> and you slept in the booth. Yeah, well, no, I, I, went out, I, I was going to go sleep in the parking lot. Yeah. And then I saw it, the blue and gold uh, Holy Grail for Road Comics, the Walmart Super Center. Wow. So I go in there, and they had one of those therapeutic chairs yeah. underneath a TV VCR, and it had Letterman on with Bill Murray. So I'm watching it, right. and when it went off the air, I'm sitting here going, yeah, I think I'll live here. <laughs> so what I did, it was like 3 a.m., and they had all the pallets out to restock the shelves. Yeah. I built a little fort around right. it. And then I went, and I got me a Coke, a, a blankie, a, a pillow, everything but a teddy bear. Yeah. Find one. Right. And... Um, 
and it had a VCR built in. So if you don't consume the product or leave the property with the product, you have not stolen said product, right? Right. I would think well, so. You know that movie Ten Cup with Kevin Costner? Yeah, I saw it. It had just come out on tape, so I very carefully opened up the tape and I popped it in the VCR. Right. So you're having a oh, it's great. Laid back time. That's great. Well, then the um, right there at the uh, 18th hole yeah. when he's going to take that 12, the last scene right. of the movie. Right. All of a sudden, I thought it was an earthquake because my wall was moving. This 17 year old pimply faced sock boy. Moves my fork, <laughs> and he looks at me, and I look at him. We just have this little moment. He just does one of these. Like, there's a person living here. Yeah, so I figured I better leave. <laughs> so I put everything up, and I went. The sun was up. I got over to the hotel. They had the day shift on. They let me have the room for free. I beat the night. Fabulous. You know, it's amazing, folks. I never realized that if you are homeless, there is a place for you at any Walmart in your neighborhood. Oh, and if you're homeless, oh, these mid-range hotels have great breakfasts. Just sneak in the back door. Free papers. Those people won't even talk to you. You can have a waffle before they even ask who you are. Fabulous. <laughs> well, look, we I, have I, learned... I'm going to write a book, How to Live on the Road for Gas Money. How to Live on the Road for Gas Money. I'll buy a copy of that, Mark. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I have been so enlightened during this show... It's just been a wonderful, moving experience for me. Uh, and you want to hawk your CD again? Yeah. How can how can they contact you again? Uh, SouthernNotStupid.com. Okay. Or you can do uh, Facebook. Is Southern Not Stupid? It's even easier to find me. And and folks, oh, before I go, I got to tell you, he's a great guest. All of our guests were great tonight. But I got to tell you, real quickly, we saw a show the other night called Angie at the 14th Street Theater in Atlanta. Please look it up. Please go see it. It's uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous show with a great, great message. And I hope it goes to Broadway. It certainly has the ability to do that. Mark, thank you so much for Thanks being for my me. guest tonight. I'm just still Folks, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please email us and let us know your thoughts. And uh, God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Tell your friends and family about it. Have a great show next week with some real heroes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take it away. Thank you for tuning in. We would like to give thanks to all our guests and sponsors. Also, special thanks to Al Burroughs, Mimi Johnson, the Cosgrove family, Earl Hayes, Angie Martin, Daryl Rhodes, and our network of friends. Become a sponsor. Call 904-229-8150 or email us at harmonybooking at hotmail.com. We'll see you next week. On Keeping It Real with Dennis Aloya on HarmonyBooking.com or AmericanHeartsRadio.com. Thank you very much and God bless.